We are so excited to share our podcast sponsor for this season of Millennial Women Talk, the American Heart Association Hispanic Serving Institution Scholars Program. The mission and vision of the HSI Scholars Program is to provide an academic year of scientific research experience professional mentorship, leadership skills, workshops, and cultural competence training to promising undergraduate students at HSIs. The program aims to prepare future physicians, nurses, researchers, healthcare administrators, and public health professionals. The HSI Scholars Program will also award a stipend scholarship to a total of 30 students, representing institutions in Florida, Puerto Rico, Chicago, Houston, New York, and Los Angeles. As Latinas ourselves, we strongly support Hispanic serving institutions across our country. The inaugural year of the program was widely successful, and we are thrilled to announce that 30 new finalists will be a part of the second year. Students who are a part of the program will have the opportunity to attend the American Heart Association scientific session in Chicago this year and get connected with the association's healthcare network that is ongoing and could lead to potential career opportunities. We wanna thank the American Heart Association Hispanic Serving Institution Scholars Program for sponsoring this season of Millennial Women Talk. We are honored to support their mission of serving diverse researchers and healthcare professionals by providing undergraduate students with academic and career enriching resources. Our community deserves access to education in order to build better health equity. If you or someone you know is interested in entering the HSI Scholars Program, check out the link in the description for more details. And now let's jump into today's episode. Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of Millennial Women Talk. I'm Melissa Carcace. And I'm Stephanie Carcace. And yes, we are two sisters. And your host for this podcast. We have a real treat for you guys today. Alexa Penavega is on the show. We interview her today talking about her new book, What If Love Is The Point. It is written with her husband, Carlos Penavega. And you guys, it was such a powerful so conversation. Good. Yes, she talked about her marriage, her relationship, all the struggles. Yes. And she even gave us an exclusive that she hadn't told Carlos yet. So <laughs> that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation. And here is our chat with Alexa Penavega. Perfect. Alexa Pena Vega, our dear friend, Hi. our amazing human. How are you? Thank you for having me. We're good. You know what? Riri did, decided not to sleep last night. So me and Carlos woke up this morning. We were like, what happened? <laughs> but we're alive. We're alive and well. And we are alive because she's still so cute. Oh my God. Aww. She is so cute. And all your kids are growing up so fast. And like, so I see fast. Ocean now and I'm like, what happened to you? I know he's, I, it's so weird because I feel like I'm a mom of babies, but then when I actually look at him, I'm like, babe, when did he become a kid? Like a, like a legit big kid who has many opinions. <laughs> like, <what happened? laughs> I know and he's now so you have big. Three kids. It's three amazing. kids. Three kids. I know. Oh, she was just happen, like right? six <laughs> months, I think, or five months when we were wow. shooting. He's young. I know Steph's like, how did that happen? Well, we all know how no, that happened. So. No, we know how that <laughs> happened. <laughs> Which is Listen, good. COVID was boring for a lot of people. <laughs> Which is funny because Carlos does share that a little bit in the book when you guys got pregnant with Ocean. Yes. I thought that part was so funny. Yes. So funny. So so talking about the book, like yes. we are so excited. Steph and I were telling you offline too how beautiful the cover is. But you know, oh, thank the, you. the book itself is incredibly powerful. I mean, you had to be so vulnerable, both of you guys. And yeah. we know you personally, but I feel like, I mean, we know you now on another level. It's insane. But like, why write this book? Like, why did you guys want to write this book? So it's really interesting. Uh, years ago, when we were actually first married, we started writing down a whole bunch of testimonies and ways that God had worked in our lives and just like things that had happened in our lives that were like, this isn't coincidental. Like this was, this all had great meaning. Um, and we were like, we need to write a book. And, and we knew that we were eventually going to write a book. And, and the, what we had titled it at the, at the time was what is the point? And we kind of wrote this mm. one sheet and, um, and we loved it. We're like, this is great. We have to get this out there. Uh, but the timing just wasn't right yet. Like we didn't really approach anybody about writing this book. We just always felt like God, when the time is right and you are ready for us to write this, like, please 
unveil that for us. Please like, like allow that direction to be so clear and so easy. Um, so fast forward to last year, um, somebody reached out to us from Thomas Nelson and they said like, Hey, I watched this Instagram video that you put out there. And I just want to know, have you ever thought of writing a book? It wasn't the wow. conventional way at all to go about it, but that's what happened for us. So we happen to have this one sheet and we're like, actually, this is what we thought of years ago. We've been adding to it over the years, but let us know what you think. So we gave that to them and they loved it. So then we started the book writing journey, which I, is a very different journey than anything we've ever experienced before. Um, you do have to be so, so vulnerable and you come in with an idea that completely changes. So like for us, this wasn't supposed to be like an autobiography type book, which it became. Right. It was right. just supposed to be us sharing our testimonies. But in that, you know, you do have to go like, actually, I need to let you into my whole world for you to understand how these testimonies actually work. Um, so we found a really cool way of just allowing both of us to tell our stories together um, with the going back and forth with each chapter and allowing our stories to intertwine. And I don't know, I feel like we never could have written this when we wanted to years ago because God's work and it's still not finished in our lives, but right. God's work wasn't finished with those testimonies even that we were talking about back then, like how those testimonies got brought back into our lives years later and, and did a number in us. Like, so, so all in all to say it was, it was years in the making, but we really started writing it last year and it felt like therapy sessions because you just yeah, have to kind yeah. of unload all of this stuff. And you're like, Oh my gosh, I don't even remember. I didn't remember half of this stuff. And now it's like bringing back so many memories and, and, and we were able to find even more testimonies where God was really working in us that we missed because we had to write this book. Oh, and so it good. really goes so well with the title, right? Because like, what if love is the point, but going back to what is the point, right? How many yeah. times do we do something? Yeah. And then we're like, well, what was the point of that? And I'm sure when you guys had started writing that book, not knowing that later on, it actually would come to fruition. Maybe yeah. it was well, we wrote that. What was the point of that? And then right. how often we do that in our lives that we we go into seasons where we're focused on something and then nothing really happens with that. Mm -hmm. And it, we do get that sentiment of like, yeah, well, what was the point of that? And then yeah. some of us might even feel like that was a waste of time or yeah. that was a waste of my energy. Um, so it's really interesting to hear that that came around for you guys again. Um, and obviously it's, it's just God's timing, right? It's always God's like, timing, okay. God's timing. You know, I, I was telling you girls right before we started, just how like God has really worked us until this season. So we happen to be in one of the busiest seasons we've been in in a long time. Carlos is about to go on tour. They have uh, over 40, 40 dates tour um wow. and the whole entire family is going. We're all going to be living on a tour bus, which is going to be so much fun. Um so we're doing that. Um, we have the book coming out. We have uh, our movie coming out and a few other things. So like, there's just like a lot happening at one time, like all within a month. Um, and uh, there are a couple things like pending right now, but just amazing, amazing things that I really felt like the last six years, God has been molding us for this moment. Had all this stuff happened six years ago, our hearts were so unprepared. Our like physically, could we have handled this? Emotionally, could we have handled this? Um, there's just so much that he really worked on in this season of not downtime, but like we definitely took a step back by moving to Hawaii, having kids, focusing on our babies. Um, work was there. I mean, obviously I met you during this time, Mel and you, Steph. So, so you know, we still worked, but it wasn't like this. Um, right. And I really feel like God was just prepping us for this moment. And there were just so many, so many things that like he allowed us to rest in before arriving to here that I'm so thankful for. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and it's funny because in the book, you guys go so deep into your schedule, so deep into your lives. But, you know, something I captured is, you know, your relationship, your faith was, I don't want to say, because I know that people's faith's journey really goes through ebbs and flows, right? But yeah. I, me as a reader, I was like, man, like I admired your testimony so much because I said, she's so, she's got it. It's like every time that you hit that wall, you're like, no, I got this, right? And it's so funny, like Carlos talks about in the book about that time where you lend somebody $800 and you left <laughs> $5 in your bank account. I read that and I was like, she's insane. I would have never answered God's yeah. call. I'd be like, yeah. $100? No. 
<laughs> Listen, Carlos thought I was insane too when yeah. uh, he found out. But you know what? I think that just, we all, and this is what I love about God. And this is what I love about faith. We all honor God with our faith differently. It doesn't look right. the same for everybody, just like worship. Like there isn't right. one way to worship God. Like worship is worship. Like you honor him in the best way that you can, that you feel like, God, this is my reverence to you. Like this is the most right. I'm going to get like, I'm going to give you everything, every part of me. And whether that's like hands raised or sitting quietly, because like, maybe you don't have a lot of quiet time. So you offering up your quiet time to God is like a great form of worship. Like whatever that means for you, it looks different for everybody. So I think that was something that we really wanted to share with people was that we both have the same goal, like kingdom mindset for right. both me and Carlos. Like we just, we love God and we really believe in the kingdom mindset. Um, but it looks well, very is, different for the both of us. That? What is the kingdom mindset? And what are those? Cause I'm like, how do I get there? Like, for <laughs> so the king was like trying to get there. How do we get there? So, so it's really interesting because, um, uh, I, I read a long time ago, this book by Francis Chan called crazy love. Um, and, and that, that book, holy moly, that book will convict you. That's like a <laughs> read it every year to you know, rejuvenate your faith. Um, but his whole thing is like, this is going to sound so creepy, but we don't think about death enough. And, okay. um, we just kind of think like, oh, life is just forever. And I have forever to, um, to kind of like make things right or to get things right. And, and he's like, but the truth is like, we don't have, like, you don't know when you're going to go. So you have to keep kind of the idea of God's kingdom in your heart all the time. Like you have to be living life for his kingdom. Like we, we work for him. We are, we are his humble servants. Right. And having that beautiful kingdom mindset or that servant heart just means that you are here to serve his people all day long. It's not a self-serving, um, kingdom. It is a people serving kingdom. And I think, and for, for me and Carlos, we both serve people differently. Um, we serve the kingdom differently and that is in everything. That's like how we, how we share our money or things or time, um, our worship, uh, yeah. all of that. And, and that we were really hoping to show in the book, um, that it works two different ways for us, but both are cohesive, both, mm-hmm. both make sense and both still honor God, even though we do it so differently. Yeah. Oh, yes. I, I love that because ultimately you guys are two different people, yes. right? Oh yeah. And I think that just how you guys are able to come together and make that work so beautifully with God at the center, of course, I think it's really beautiful to read, right? Because you really, I mean, as you go through the book, there's, you know, you have a chapter, he has a chapter, then you eventually come together for certain parts, but you guys are so different. And that does stand out Mm -hmm. when you're reading it. But at the same time, you're also one. Right. So yeah. it's, it's really interesting, even on a relationship aspect yes. while I was reading that. Um, Cause and, girl, you yeah. had to put up with some things. I was like, Carlos, <laughs> Carlos what are you doing? You know, it's, it's really funny because um, we all have, I had this list right before I met Carlos of like what my expectations oh. were with a man and what I thought I wanted. Right. And in the book, I talk about how it's so cheesy, but Carlos was everything I never knew I wanted. He was literally everything on my no list. Right. Um, but those were all the things that I needed to elevate me. If I wanted somebody who was just like me or somebody to keep me just where I was at, then I, you know, I married that person. I was actually married before Carlos. And yeah. even though like we have a cordial friendship, like he, he's a nice guy. He was not right for me. Um, we didn't elevate each other. We didn't push each other to grow. And that's something that Carlos really brings to our family, not just me, but to our, our family, our kids. He really elevates me and I elevate him um, yeah. because we challenge each other in these areas that we were comfortable in. We were fine. I did not need to be changed in these areas, but I did, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> we're not supposed to just sit down and be comfortable. We're supposed to constantly be stretching, growing, learning. Right. If you're not growing, you're dying. It's not one yes. or the other. You don't just sit still. It's like you either grow or you you don't. Um, yeah, right. And and yeah, so Carlos is somebody that even, even in those times where we look at it and we're like, Carlos, what are you doing? Like, why didn't you step up here? He was really growing me but I was also yeah. growing him. Like we, I was learning how to be kind of like, 
the stronghold with our faith, like in our family, how like, I was like, you know what, this is a season where I'm really going to have to lead our family in this area. So that will be me and that's okay. And there are other seasons where that's him, but in the off seasons, that's when we learn, that's when we're growing and, and stretching. And that's what has really been able to get us to where we are today um, yeah. with this kind of strength. So like when we get hit with a hard season, we're like, we're good. We got this. You got this. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Yeah. And I want to talk about the sacrifices, you know, Carlos, you know, you guys share a lot about that too, like, especially after ocean and you started having your babies and, you know, you guys are in entertainment, you know, mm -hmm. entertainment is, it's hard. I mean, this right. is, it's a nonstop hustle. It's, it's, it's exhausting. And on top of that, you're building a family. What are those sacrifices like that you had yeah. to make, you know, and I, and I know you want to tap into to the whole LA thing too, which we'll touch yeah, into sure. that as well. But you know, what were those major sacrifices that you had to, had to make and how did you guys get through that season? You know, uh, so Carlos was hitting a season in his career where, um, he was up for all of these jobs, like, like every pilot, um, these big movies, so many things It was between him and this other guy and the other guy would always get it. And he was just like, what is going on? Like, what am I doing wrong? And um, not to make this like, it's not like a, a race thing or anything, but like, right. usually it'd be like the white guy and Carlos, and then they'd give it to the white right. guy. And Carlos is like, what am I doing? And I'm like, babe, I think it's just like a character thing. Like they're, this is what they're going for. Or you never know, like whoever they cast, whatever it was. And it just got to the point where he's like, I want to quit. I don't want to do this anymore. Like I, I can't mm. stand this rejection. Like it was hitting him so hard. And this might talk this might touch on what you maybe wanted to ask Steph is that at the time we were living in LA and mm -hmm. all the people, the hustle, the, the amount of people that we found in friendships that were actually just there for like what could get them ahead in their careers and whatnot, just so many ugly things about yeah. Hollywood were coming to a boiling point specifically for Carlos at that time. Um, and we always had this kind of want and need to move to Hawaii, but we just thought it was years later. Um, so I finally told Carlos that like, I was willing to move, that I was ready to move, um, mm. and get to Hawaii to kind of get out of this season, this like boiling point that we were in. And I have to say that was really hard for me because in my heart, I knew it was the right decision, but right. I was seething inside because I loved my career and I mm. loved living in Los Angeles. And it was not some like, let's move to Hawaii. Great. Like maybe on the <laughs> outside, I was that person for Carlos, but in the inside, I was like, this is so annoying. Like mm. I like it, of course, like you go through the things of like, God, why can't he just be fine with where we're at in our life? Like, like, you know, just my own growing pains, but obviously I wanted to be a strong wife for my husband. And I knew this was the best decision that I could be making for my family, for my husband to get us out of this situation, move away and allow our hearts to heal. And if God still wants us to be in the industry from there, we can be, and, and God provided, like he provided more than we ever could have imagined. And I actually want to share this with you because yesterday I was sitting in the car and I had this revelation, like, like all the, all these years I've been thinking that we moved to Hawaii for my husband, like for Carlos to be able to like get his heart in a place where he was okay to handle rejection or okay to handle this, whatever success might come in the future. You know, just like thinking that this was all for him. And it just hit me so much how it was actually for my heart. And yeah. I was like, wait, what? This whole time I'm thinking like, oh, Carlos needed this. Carlos needed this. And God was like, actually, I did it for you. Like it was oh, actually wow. your heart that needed, like, I don't want to cry. But like, he was like, mm. it was your heart that really needed restoration. You were the one that was like caught up in like really wanting this career, really wanting this. And he's like that you were actually the one that was off track. <laughs> like wow. you were the one that needed focus. And I haven't even had a chance to tell Carlos this yet. So I'm like really excited to tell him. We have an exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have an exclusive before we get to talk about it. It was, it, was, it was this moment of like, it was so humbling because all this yeah. time I was like, I did such a good wife thing. I like moved for my husband. And yeah. God's like, I'm glad that you thought that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> but <right>. actually <laughs> this was, this was for you, mama. <laughs> Wow. You know, that's so powerful what you just shared. And I'll tell you why, because you know how many wives feel like maybe in a season they're doing it for their husband and they create mm. a resentment. 
yeah, towards 100%, their husband. Oh, yeah. 100%. Right? That resentment yes. will kill your relationship. It yes, is absolutely. terrible. And it's something yep. I've, yep. It's, I've grappled with. It's not, I never have I thought anything like poorly of my husband or anything like that. Right. But there's certainly this like, I had a nonstop career where I was like, I literally took a step back from all of that. And I love working. If any, if you like anybody who doesn't really know me well, if there's one thing you know about me is like set feels like home. Like yeah. it just, it's where I grew up. It's where I feel I'm passionate about acting. I'm, I love it so much. And the problem was it became my identity. Like where, when I didn't have that, I had no idea what other passions that I, I could have to me, it was just acting. That was my end all be all. And God has really ha had to go like, what else do you like? Like focus on me. What other treasures have I given you that yeah. you've been missing because you're so into this. And he's like, yes, I gave you that treasure and that's fantastic. But like, I'm pulling you over here for a second for a reason. So grow, like allow me to grow you. That's so interesting. That. Cause we do get attached to the things that we're good at. Right. Totally. Or that one thing, but then the the dangerous part, which is what you're talking about, when you completely put your whole identity to just one or a couple things, right? Yeah. And then, if there is a season that you don't use those things, then you question, well, what else am I good at, right? Which is so lost. It's mm -hmm. lost. Mm -hmm. It's that sense of confusion. Who am I if I don't mm -hmm. have this? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Talk yeah. to us a little bit about that, because I do think that um, personally, I can resonate with that completely um, as far as like my my music, my musical journey. And, you know, I was always just a singer. Right. And my identity was so ingrained in that. Yeah. And now I'm in a season of like, well, I'm not doing music so much anymore. Well, what else am I good at? Right. So right. I'd, I'd love to um, for you to share a little bit more about that and that whole process of when you were in that moment. I think, okay, so a couple of things. Um, I'm still, I'm still growing and I'm still learning. So it's not like I've reached the, I've reached it. And I'm like, guys, I figured it out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but for me um, in, in these seasons, I didn't realize how much I would value and need to take a step back from my career, even to just be a mom. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like I was always, especially in the beginning, like um, I took a step back, like we decided that, if Carlos was working on something, I wouldn't. If I was working on something, Carlos wouldn't because we wanted to always keep the family together. That's one thing that we notice in this industry. What breaks people up is like the distance apart and people will go and make movies for three months, six months and like barely see their spouses or their kids for that yeah. matter. And we're like, we don't want to do that. Like we, right. we know that that's not healthy for us. So, um, so when we first, um, the first thing we ever did was Carlos was on a TV show in Canada. And that was really frustrating for me because I was up for a very, very big movie. Um, it was with JLo and uh, um, I like screen tested for it. I was so excited and it would have, it would mean that I would actually have to like be away from Carlos for a significant amount of time with ocean while ocean was doing this, this show. And wow. I remember having like resentment in that moment of just like, mm -hmm. I want to, you don't even want this. I'm the one who wants mm -hmm. this. And like, mm -hmm. I'm having to like, like almost sacrifice this in a way. Um, and I just remember praying like, God, if this is, if this is not for me, like just, I don't, like I want it, but like, if this is going to hurt my family, I don't want it. And, um, and I didn't end up getting it, but I remember being frustrated because I'm like, well, if Carlos wasn't on this show, I would have gotten it. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, still like you have these, yeah. thoughts. um, right. but then, but then I also realized I was like, holy crap, looking back at that time, he needed me so badly. He was having the worst experience on that show. Um, it was actually the hardest time in our marriage. Like, had we not been married, we would have broken up. There's no way oh, we wow. would together. And that's also like a very powerful testament to how important marriage is. Um, right. Not to say that people can't be strong in relationships without it, but like you do get to a breaking point. And if you're at that breaking point and you're not married, it's very easy to just go, you know what? I'm done. I'm out. Whereas right. when you're married, you, you have to stick through some of the harder stuff that you maybe would have walked away from in just like a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship um, and really go, nope, I don't want to get a divorce. Like we really got to work through this. Um, so for us, uh, uh, we had that really rough season, but in that time I was just like, man, you know, I really, 
I really actually need to be here for him. Um, I didn't like it. Again, I still did it all kind of begrudgingly. Um, yeah. But I wanted to be by his side and I took a step back and and I did that. And now looking back, I'm so glad that I did because obviously God gave me that word yesterday where I had time to be a mom. Like mm-hmm. I was there for my kids. I, I was able to actually watch them grow up. I wasn't just stuck on these sets all day long where even though I would be fulfilled or like, like my artistic side would be very, very fulfilled. Um, my kids would be raised by nannies. And mm-hmm. I don't want my kids being raised by nannies. I want them to be raised by their parents. So yeah. it really kind of gave me this awesome time to be a really good wife, a really good mom, and set a foundation. Like it, you usually need five years of foundation building, whether that's in your marriage or your business or whatever it is. Usually the first five years are building your foundation. And after that comes like, it, it's like planting a seed. So the seed yeah. is like five years. And then after that, you see the fruits, you see the growth, you see all that. And that's what I was doing in those five years. And honestly, like what God has done to like, it is blossoming so much now, but I needed those five years of just being a mom and just being yeah. a wife and, and cultivating that foundation before anything yeah. else. And also yeah. to have that experience, right? Like yes, to the experience of being a wife, being a mother in those early yeah. years, especially, but sometimes it's like what I was saying, we, we put our identity into something and then we mm-hmm. kind of block other aspects of life, right? When you think about yeah. all of life and all there is to experience, right? And right. So it's so beautiful that in the moment, maybe you felt like that opportunity was taken away from you, but the opportunities are coming around now. It's like, it, yeah. like throughout this conversation, that's what I keep on seeing, right? And I think that that is very comforting to a lot of people because if you are right now in a season that you feel like, oh, I missed out on that opportunity, like doesn't mean that five years down the line, right? That it can't come back yeah. around. Um, okay, like so, how the book is and yeah. and exactly what you're talking about. What are you so, okay? I know I'm, I'm I'm totally interrupting you and I'm sorry, Steph, but, no, no, but no, no. they're in first Peter five six. I literally posted this yesterday. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Mm, and yeah. to me, I was like, that just describes so much of what we had gone through, where it's like, okay, yes. God, I'm gonna humble myself before you. And in your time, I know that you will lift me up whenever that may be. It might be in one month. It might be in five years. It might be in 20 years. Like, you don't know. But at the end of the day, like, I want to humble myself under him and in nothing else. Like, and, and whenever, and that's why I think it's so important to find faith in your relationship together, because you're both growing towards the same purpose. Like, how many times were we on totally different pages when reading that book. Um, But yet we had the same end goal. And because we had the same end goal, we could be all over the place, but we were all going here. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, especially like in past relationships where God wasn't at the center, we're all over the place, but there was really wasn't an end goal. So like whenever we would fight or whenever um, things would kind of just go awry in our relationship, it was really hard to kind of reconcile because there wasn't this like thing that we were both fighting towards. Mm -hmm. Um, And whereas for us, we're like, man, the kingdom, like heaven is like the ultimate goal. So how do we live in a way that represents heaven here on earth that, that, Oh, like brings us closer to heaven. And for us, because that's our end goal, it really just makes everything click. Even all the craziness, it just all makes sense when you have that mindset. Oh, that's so, so good. Okay. So we're going to wrap up because we don't want to let you go yet because the book, there's so much (laughs) I want to talk about, but for somebody who's just looking for like, okay, amazing. The end goal is the kingdom. Great. What are like tangible, practical? What can I be doing every day? Like, what's that yes. practice? Like, tell us all the deets. Um, the biggest thing that was a, a, a major change for me, uh, and again, I talk about this in the book, but um, I just remembered it. I wanted to talk to God all the time. Like when they say pray without ceasing in the Bible, like it's not just this, like we have to be in this, like on your knees, praying to God. Like he wants us to have a conversation with him, just like we're having a conversation, right? Like Mm -hmm. he wants to be in your every moment, whether it's a silly little moment that you or a moment that you maybe feel is silly or a big, big moment when it comes to like jobs or relationships or whatever. Like he wants to be a part of 
all of it. Just like Carlos wants to be a part of everything that I do. Um, so for me, I actually set, I had this like little diffuser thing that had a timer on it. And every like 15 minutes, it would like gong and make like a really pretty noise. And it would, I made that my reminder uh, for like, okay, God, this is, this is my reminder to talk to you and just kind of fill you in on what my heart is doing. And it was literally every 15 minutes. And wow. I basically trained myself to always go to God. So when I'm cooking, mm -hmm. I'm just be like, all right, God, like may this arroz con pollo be good for my family. May be nourishing, <laughs> right. Like, or like when the kids are throwing a tantrum, I'm just like, all right, God, like, I thank you for allowing me to have the peace that I still have, even in this moment. Um, you know, like literally every little thing became a prayer to where now I just talk to God about everything. So I feel like if you want to kind of like start to train yourself in a way to kind of bring everything to God, set a timer. So that way, like it feels silly, but you can literally be on the toilet be like, all right, God, this is the time I have to give to you right now. <laughs> Excuse me, but. Because <laughs> he doesn't care. I think about it all the time when my kids are sitting on the toilet and they're yeah. talking to me. I don't think like, oh, you're, you're pooping right now. Like, how about you not talk to me? I'm like, you well, we don't talk about book? this. Yeah, right. Yeah. Or like, they're like, I love you, mommy. Or like, sing me a song or whatever. And my heart is so full. Like, and I know. And imagine I, if you were doing that with God. Right. And, and I just imagine like he sees us as little children. He doesn't see us as like disgusting, like pooping people. <laughs> he sees us as like cute He children. loves us. We're his children. He loves us. Exactly. <laughs> so I really feel like we just have Amazing. to have that mindset, like that parent mindset when we think of God. I love it. Ooh, oh, Alexa, good. this was so good. <laughs> I knew so, I could so find good. a way to bring poop into this conversation. <laughs> there we go. Poop while you're talking to God. That's exactly for you That's right for the there. title. That's the mom. <laughs> you are the absolute best. Thank you so, so I much. I love you, girls. For Thank everything. You for and uh, tell us where they can find the book. Anywhere? You guys, this book is available anywhere and everywhere on June 28th. Um, you could actually also get the Audible version, not the Audible, sorry. You can also get the audiobook version as well coming out on the same date. So you get to hear um, me and Carlos read it out loud and it's kind of ridiculous. There are actually I'm little differences try. in yeah. the audio version. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to actually do it again with the audio. Yes. I'm going to hear it then again. you can hear us reading it to you. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. June 28th. Yes. Awesome. June 28th. Check it out. Thank you so awesome. much, Alexa. We love Thank you. you. I love you, girls. Thank you so much for having <laughs> me. You. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. Wasn't it so good? It was so good. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Yes. Make sure to pick up a copy of their book, What If Love Is The Point, anywhere they sell books. Yes. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow, and leave us a review. It means so much to us and our team, and it really, truly helps the show keep going. So thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye, everybody. Bye.